to my brothers and sisters at Freeman Heights Baptist Church. It is so good to once again be back with you via YouTube, Facebook, or however you happen to be viewing this message. Thanks be unto God for this privilege to be able to continue in our sermon series in 1 Peter. We would ask that you would turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter, the third chapter, and we're gonna be looking at verses one through seven of that third chapter in 1 Peter. Sounds like this. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives. As they observe your chaste and respectful behavior, your adornment must not merely uh, be eternal, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person, the, the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. You husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker, since she is a woman, and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. And God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our gracious and heavenly Father, as we once again are privileged to be Standing and saying a word for you, we pray that your servant would in fact decrease, that you would increase, speak through me, that your children would be edified, and those that know not Christ would come to know him as their Savior. In precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. We are the people of God. Submission is not a bad word in marriage. Submission is not a bad word in marriage. A magazine for Christian leaders published a cartoon that showed a pastor peering out anxiously from inside a World War II style bunker, which was behind the pulpit. The well-protected pastor announced, my text for today is 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7. Today, it's very socially and politically incorrect to suggest that marriage is built on a wife's loving submission and respect to her husband. We shouldn't be surprised that the world labels the concept outmoded, outdated, even suggests that it is uh, old fashioned and fogey and times have changed. But as brothers and sisters in Christ, we should rely on the teachings of Bible, God's holy and inspired word to give us guidance in how we are to behave in the marriage relationship. Peter lets us know that couples need these qualities for the success of their relationship. It's important to, for a successful marriage that each person in that relationship understands their biblical responsibility. Moreover, this uh, affects us and we'll see how it affects us in our directly with our relationship with our Lord. Our text begins with the word likewise, referring to the second chapter when we discuss submission. Yes, in that second chapter of 1 Peter, we discuss submission. Submission to authority, the authority that's been placed over us by government, the authority that's been placed over us by the workplace, and even unruly bosses and even government mandates that we don't believe uh, that we are agreeable with. In that second chapter, we see that it was in God's will that we be submissive. Likewise, in the third chapter, we begin with God bringing that same uh, uh, concept to us in marriage. And he deals with that exclusively in these seven power-packed verses. It says here to be submissive. Even when husbands don't behave, even when your husband is not acting appropriately, 
That word submission brings chills down many people's spines and many women, and rightfully so. So many times men in society have used submission in an abusive way that was never intended by the Bible. So I do understand how that word can bring about uh, uh, disdain and distaste in many mouths. But when we look at it from a biblical perspective and understand it from a biblical perspective, we'll see that submission in marriage is not a bad thing, but a great thing that's ordained by God. In our text today, we'll discover that in order for a marriage to work, God has in ordained for there to be mutual submission. Yeah. Mutual submission. Let's examine our text and see how we can have marital bliss when we submit. We'll break this message down into two pieces. First, we'll address a word for my sisters, wives, and then secondly, for my brothers, those that are married, husbands. The guidance for wives. As I stated in the introduction, I understand why many wives and my sisters in Christ would have a problem with the word submission. It has been used in the past in a way that is degrading and contrary to the will of God. It should not have taken a Me Too movement for us to wake up and realize that women are valued in the sight of God. But we're thanks be unto God for this word. And Peter writes this in a text of a culture where women were not considered equal to men and had no rights. And the first thing I want us to understand, and I've said it already, but I wanna just focus a little time on this issue about uh, the essence in being and submission. Many people have a problem with submission because we believe it makes us inferior, makes us less than. The, the, the biblical mandate clearly lets us know by scripture that we are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 28 says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If that is in fact true, if we are all one in Christ Jesus, why must I submit to my husband? Well, the Bible teaches us, and the Bible teaches us that it is mutual submission. There is a mutual submission. Ephesians 5, 21 says, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. We have to submit to God first and then submitting to each other is not a problem. But first we must come unto the Lordship of our Lord and Savior and then submitting will not be a problem. But for Paul and Peter, it's voluntary submission that's based on one's recognition of God's order, God's order. It is submission which is based on the death of pride of one hand and then the desire to serve on another. And then the text tells us and tells wives and gives guidance on what should I do when I am in marriage to a man that is disobedient to the word of God. Unfortunately, my sisters, too many of you are in relationships with men that are not obedient to the word of God. So how should you behave and how should you act if you find yourself in that circumstance or situation? Peter gives that guidance right there into our text. By entering into a marriage, we do so with an understanding that you are to submit to your husband. Let me say that again. Let me make say that again. When you enter into marriage, a Christian should understand that you are entering a relationship voluntarily and then are subjecting yourself to the authority of man. Oh, there we go again. I know that caused a problem, but I'm going to help you with that in just a few minutes. Bear with me. Don't turn off the TV. Don't turn off the screen. Don't turn off your computer. I'm going to deal with that in just a minute. But when a man is disobedient, your husband is disobedient, and we'll talk about the husband's responsibility in a few minutes. We examine 521, which directs us to mutual submission. It also dictates biblical order. In verses 22 and 24 of that same fifth chapter, these words are recorded. Wives be subject 
to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is also the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be the subject to their husbands in everything. In chapter two, Peter focuses on our witness to others and now focuses on a wife's witness to her disobedient husband. And they're told here that they would be one, that they would be one by their behavior and not their speech. Let me say that again. And it's ironic that the Bible says that the person, the husband, is disobedient to the word, referring to the Holy Scriptures, to Jesus Christ and his mandates. But when it comes to a wife, yes, we should, in fact, address and speak to our husbands when we need to witness to them if they are receptive to hearing from you. But if they are not receptive, then the guidance that you're given in 1 Peter is let your witness and your behavior win them over. Verses 3 and 4 of our text is not suggesting that a woman should neglect her outward appearance. Oh, thanks be unto God. I'm so glad that women get their hair done. I'm so glad that women put on wake up, makeup. I'm so glad that women take the time to make themselves look appealing. But what Peter is saying to each one of us is it's more important that we focus on that inward beauty, those inner qualities that only come from Christ. Those things will last. Oh, let me just tell you that if you keep on living, you're going to see that the outward is going to change. But the inner beauty that we receive for being in Christ Jesus is eternal. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if there has to be a priority in your life, it ought to be on the relationship, my sisters, with Jesus Christ and not so much with the outer appearance. He's not forbidding for you to get your hair done. He's not forbidding you to put on a dress or wear nice clothing. Once again, Peter's point is that the inner person and behavior is more important than outward appearance. Well, I know, ladies, at this point, and my sisters, you're saying, well, what about, what about guidance for my husbands? Well, here we go. Submission comes from love, not physical strength. I'm talking to the men. I'm talking to husbands. In general, men are physically stronger than women. Now, I have to admit, I have to admit, when the gyms were open and the fitness centers were open, I saw some ladies in there working out who were pretty strong. But in general, women are weaker than men. And then men are directed to know and understand their wife and their wife's needs. See, that was difficult for me to comprehend and understand when I first got married. You see, I would come home from work and I would ask Deborah, my wife, how's your day been going? And she would just go on and on and on about her day and all the problems. But none of those things that she was telling me, I could do anything about. She would just go on and on and on. And so finally I said, well, honey, what do you want me to do? I, I can't do anything about that. She said, I don't want you to do anything but listen. You see, I wanted to try to solve a problem. What she wanted to have is a loving husband who listened to her concerns. So we must get to the point in our relationships where we understand what our wives need from us and give them what they need and not be so concerned with what we need. Some lady on the audience ought to be saying amen right about now. God's intent is for men to honor their wives. And submission is not of fear, but of perfect love. Mutual submission is placing the needs of your wife before your own. One of the things that is so troubling in our land today is domestic violence, where men believe that by force and brute strength, they can cause their wives to be in submission to them. This is so contrary to the word of God. God never intended for a man to be abusive, brutal to their wives. Quite the contrary, quite the contrary. Wives are to be lifted up and, and honored and respected. 
And the next thing, brothers, that we need to understand in husbands, you must lead by serving. Your leadership in subjection comes by how you serve your wife. Once again, in that fifth chapter of Ephesians clearly stated, men are the head of the family just as Christ is head of the church. Now, let me just pause there. Some people have so much problem with that, but let me just kind of break this down. We've already said that we are equal in essence and being. As it relates to God, we are equal. We are of one essence in being. Why is it that we have such a problem with submission in relationships in the Bible? When we go to work each day, we have no problem with submitting to our boss. The boss is not necessarily a better person. They may not be smarter. They may not be more knowledgeable. They may not know the word like you know it. They may not live their life like they know it, like you think they should or in accordance with the Bible. But when we go to work, we have voluntarily set ourselves in a position that we understand we have hierarchy or order. The same thing is true of all of God's institutions. There has to be order. But mutual submission lets us know that this order has nothing to do with me being inferior, doesn't mean that I'm weaker, doesn't mean that I can't be used of God, it just means that we recognize God ordained order in our lives. My brothers, being the head is not about being served, but by serving. Men are directed to love their wives like Christ loved the church. Our example of how we are to love our wives is how Christ unconditionally loves the church. In spite of all my sin, in spite of all of my wrongdoings, in spite of all of my faults, all of the things, the Bible tells me that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. And he died for you. He died for each one of us. And it had nothing to do with how we behaved, but all to do with his love and servant attitude. My brothers, that is the attitude we should have towards our wives, that we will treat them and honor them just as Christ died for the church. Before you can be a godly husband, you must die to self and submit to the Lordship of Christ in your life. My sisters, this is why we are giving guidance on not being unequally yoked. It's so important that you enter into a relationship with a godly man that understands the importance of submission and how a wife should be treated. Peter closes my brothers and husbands with a strong and very strange warning. This is the motivation for taking his words with the utmost seriousness that your prayers be not hindered. Peter is reminding men that hindered is a military term for an army digging a trench in the road to stop the enemy's advance. It describes what Satan will do in your spiritual life by trying to wedge between you and your wife by you taking on a my way or the highway attitude. That will cause a disruption in your relationship with God. And if you're here today under the sound of my voice, the first thing you need to understand, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, by the fact that all men have sinned, you're eternally, you are separated from God. If you're hearing, hearing my voice and you're not sure that you would go to heaven if you were to die today, I would encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. And if you have already made that decision, but you're living in a way that's not pleasing to the Bible as it relates to your wife, you should go to your wife, fall down before her, ask for her forgiveness, and that you would become the man that God would have you to be, that you would love her like Christ loved the church. And once you get to that point in your life, you recognize that you don't want anything to stand in the way of your relationship with God. So if you're here today, hearing the sound of my voice, You've accepted Christ, but you're out of relationship with your wife. It is your responsibility. It is your responsibility 
to bring about the reconciliation and make that relationship what God intended to be. Headship is about leadership. Let us pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for submission. We thank you for our wives. And we thank you for the institution of marriage. We ask that all would conform to your word and your will and your way. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.